on the Apple Store. So you just for terms and conditions. This is something that after every repair or replacement, you do have to sign an agreement. So let's start off right away, the very first sentence. So Apple will service your product as described and for the charges shown on the work authorization plus any applicable tax. Apple may restrict service to one product per customer during your visit to the Apple retail store. When the service is covered by Apple's warranty, Apple understands that your data may be valuable to you. Data loss during service is always a possibility and in some cases, data may be unrecoverable, erased or reformatted during service. For this reason, it is your sole responsibility to back up all existing data software or programs from your product and decide whether to erase any such data from your product prior to receiving service. Apple is not responsible for loss, recovery, or compromise of data, software, or programs, or loss of use of your product or other equipment arising out of the services provided by Apple. You represent that your product does not contain any legal files or data. You acknowledge that your device may be sent out for common carrier to be serviced by an external service provider. For this reason, it is recommended that you back up your device and wipe it prior to submission of service. There's a lot to take in that one. Yeah, I never, yeah. I never heard of that last part. If oh yeah, I've... if it's going to be sent out to a common carrier, to external service provider, you have to back up your device and wipe it. So yeah, so remember, first thing I want to break down: one product per customer. That I can't tell you how many times how annoying that oh, is. Yeah. That people came in with multiple products under one appointment. That's not how it works. And I'm, yeah. and I was usually pretty good at correcting that. So that's, in my opinion, I think I was good at correcting that. Also. That the fact that Apple understands your data is valuable to do, data loss could occur during service. There was an agreement that we had people sign prior to that for the repair. Because sometimes people, we don't send them the terms and conditions because there's nothing to sign. They understand that anytime we did like any diagnostics or anything, you could lose data. But again, the main thing on this one, and we probably say it almost every episode, you are responsible to back up your stuff. Apple is not. Yep. I don't know how many times I could, you know, talk about that. Also, that Apple tells you that hey, we're gonna be we could be sending this out for service, and that happens with a lot of Macs, and a lot of times they're gonna be wiped, especially these 2016 MacBook Pros and above, because the solid state drive is soldered to the board, so you're guaranteed an erase if the logic board's gotta be changed. This this is extremely important when people skip this, you know. Again, people are gonna say, oh, that genius didn't tell me about it. Well, it's in the terms and conditions. You know, people say that they don't read this, but you have to read it. You know, that's why we're doing this now. All right, Tim. Yeah, next one. All right. Section two. If service is needed due to failure of parts that are not original to the product or due to damage caused by abuse, misuse, or external cause, Apple reserves the right to return the product to you without servicing it and may hold you responsible for any indicated diagnostic fee. Apple will not be responsible for any damage to the product that occurs during the repair process that is a result of any unauthorized modifications or repairs or replacements not performed by Apple or an authorized Apple service provider. If damage results, Apple will seek your authorization for any additional cost for completing service even if the product is covered by warranty or an Apple Care service plan. If you decline authorization, Apple may return your product unrepaired in the damaged condition without any responsibility. So as a genius admin, I saw this a lot, and I had to have yeah, a lot of these that, that, tough conversations. That's why, that's why this sentence was good for you. Yeah. You um, had to make the call. So let's say let's say that you uh, have an iPhone six, and instead of getting the screen replaced with within an Apple service provider or an Apple, and you get it fixed at like iFixit or some stand in the mall for a cheaper rate, and then you come into the Apple store for to replace your Apple battery because your battery needs to be replaced and during the repair the genius or the technician accidentally breaks the screen finds out that it's a third party screen Mm -hmm. we can actually attempt to put the broken screen back on have you come pick it up and then say hey your screen is cracked due to repair because it's third party we cannot replace it for you but we can replace it for you if you 
if you pay for the replacement cost of the screen, or you can decline it at the pickup. Now this seems like something that is like, wow, like Apple broke it, they should pay for it. Yes, but in this agreement, if it's not a genuine Apple part, we are not responsible for the product. Um, So that that is huge to know. So I can tell you right now, the Genius Bar, that was something that if we could, we, I'll be honest, geniuses know when you have a third party screen, they, they know because they can see it. And it's very obvious sometimes, especially yeah. like if there's like a certain tint to the screen, like a bluish tint, you can tell it's a modified device. What this is saying is that one of the responsibilities as a genius is to tell people, hey, we'll try the repair, but if this doesn't work or there's any other modifications or liquid damage, we're going to put the original screen back on and we may damage it while we open it. Yep. You know, honestly, Apple protects us in these work authorizations, but one thing I hated from a management standpoint and I never understood this. This protects us, even if we don't say it. Am I right or am I wrong? No, no, you're completely right. So why would management side with a customer because we didn't say it? You know, I I always said to, I said I told every customer, you if you do read these terms and conditions, you know, if something happens, likely it's going to be mentioned in here. You know, a lot of times we had to say it just to say we said it. But to be honest, people still would come back and say, oh, he never said that. Yeah, that's just like people get wanting to get to what they want. Um, but I think it went case by case, specifically for the store that we worked in. I, I always said this protected me no matter if I did something wrong or not, because the, the oh, terms I agree are with right you. there. Part of the service, Apple may install a system software updates that will prevent your Apple product from reverting to an earlier version of the system software. Third-party applications installed on your Apple product may not be compatible to work with your Apple product as a result of the system software update. Now, that's going to be a big thing because, remember, the next operating system coming out is going to stop supporting legacy products that are not optimized for the Mac. They've been, they've been up, you know, they're allowing these apps to stay aboard and working, but the reality is they're going to stop. I can tell you right now, I probably have at least four, five, six apps that are not going to work with the next OS operate. Yeah. Remember Flappy Bird? <laughs> yeah, Flappy Bird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of examples out there. Even like older versions of Photoshop, CS6 is not going to work on the next upgrade. So I can tell you this is going to be bigger than ever, the next operating system when it comes out. And that's coming out in a matter of months. So yeah. To, and, and to be honest, you know, people sometimes want to go backwards, and there is some Macs that can go backwards. But if you're if you were running, you know, Mac OS and Mavericks, and you're going to be upgraded to Mojave, that's five years of a change. Yeah, that's big. There's a lot of things that change, and a lot of people come to the Genius Bar and were that far behind. They never upgraded the Opera because they didn't know how to do it. You know, so the reality is that that happens. So I'm I fully get that. If service requires labor and or parts not specified on the work authorization, Apple may seek your approval of a revised estimate. If you do not agree that Apple may revise the charges, Apple may return your product and hold you responsible for any indicated diagnostic fee. Uh, This is related to what I was describing before. Let's say, uh, again, another genius admin kind of duty was, uh, let's say we sent out a iPhone got screened and it needs to be sent out to Depot for further investigation and it gets sent out because it's having a wireless connectivity issue and then they open up the phone and they actually find water damage inside the phone. So now it's going to be requoted for a different cost and we have to acknowledge the customer of the new cost of the uh, product mm-hmm. because it wasn't actually written in the original work authorization. So you have the option to deny it or agree to it, but with the understanding that the original problem may not be fixed because of the ex- the other yeah. issues that populated. Yeah, yeah it's going to go back broken. And I'll be honest, Apple doesn't do a diagnostic fee, at least in the U.S., I don't recall. I think it's more so third-party Apple authorized service providers that might be I, I believe that you're exactly correct fee. with that. But Apple stores, I can tell you right now, because they use this work authorization for everywhere. Uh, so I can tell you right now, this is more third-party space, but I can tell you with Apple, they never turned to diagnostic fee. Yeah. I never see them do that. All right, so Apple may use parts or products that are new or equivalent to new in reliability and performance. We're going to talk about that in a second. Apple will retain the replaced part or product that is exchanged as its property, and the replacement part will become your property. Replaced parts are generally repairable and are exchanged or repaired by Apple for value. So this is important. This is a big one. Because everyone 
that came to a store and said, oh, is it new or refurbished? Well, in Article 5, it says that they are new or equivalent to new. Yep. Now, this wording has changed over the years that I've been part of Apple. At one point, they would say reconditioned. They would say yeah, refurbished. That. So they, this wording has changed since I've been a part of Apple. But I remember always saying refurbished at one point. But reconditioned was the word. Now it's equivalent to new. So I, so if I was at the bar now and I saw that, because I, I would look at the terms and conditions from here and there. I would say, is it new or is it re, refurbished? I would say new or equivalent to new. Tim, explain what refurbished is. Refurbished is a product that was given in and it was previously used and owned and it has been tested and verified that it will work again and can be you know, re-sold re, uh, to uh, new customers. That means the battery's been used, the screen's been used. When you get a replacement phone, your screen's new, your battery's new, your outside casing's new, the only thing that may have been reused is a logic board, and if it's still like in a manufacturing, I guarantee you that it's still a new device. But if it's like an yeah. iPhone 6 or 6S, it's not lo no longer made, I would likely say it's equivalent to new. So that just explains that, but please understand that Apple doesn't do refurbished products. And Tim's going to talk about the next sentence, which ties into that. Yeah, but I, I just want to point out one more point from the last one. Uh, just from another, again, from another genius admin perspective, a lot of customers asked for like their screens back or their batteries back, their old ones that they were replaced uh, because mm -hmm. they felt that they owned that property. Uh, yeah, according to this agreement, and it's always been a, a thing, you cannot bring your, you're kind of exchanging goods. I'm giving you a new part, I'm taking your old part. What's important about getting your screens replaced is a lot of the old screens have screen protectors on them. Um, so they will not come and be replaced on your new dev new screen. Um, so they will actually just be thrown away. Some geniuses or genius admins give the courtesy of having it removed from your old screen and giving it back to you because some screen protector companies have warranties with them. But uh, just be wary. If, if you're bringing a cracked screen in to get replaced and it has a screen protector on it, I advise you to take it off before the you come to the Apple store. Yeah, it's a big thing too. We, we, we I mean, genius just had to be smart to. I always tell people to take it off. I never brought it in the back. Yeah, never. yeah, ex exactly. Or I would warn them, or I would warn them that hey, this is gonna crack when we open. It's gonna crack. So, you know, like the, the if you want to get a good screen protector, by the way, get the Belkin one in the Apple stores. They have a lifetime warranty, guys. So, yep, get yep. those. Okay, so uh, Apple warrants for a period of ninety days from the date of service that service will be performed in a competent and workmanlike manner. And that all parts used to service your product will be free from defects in materials and workmanship, unless otherwise specified by Apple. Apple for further warrants to the extent permitted by law that batteries installed as part of Apple's battery replacement service for Apple portable Mac computers will be free from defects and materials and workmanship for one year from the date of service. Every part that you get replaced in your either computer or iPhone has a 90 day warranty on it. Outside of the Apple Mac batteries, they actually have a one year warranty associated to it. Now, this is not a, oh, the I cracked the screen within 90 days, it has a warranty, I can get a replacer free. No, it's if it's a manufacturing defect or you know something just not working right that is not caused by the user, falls into that 90 day or one year warranty but it has to be the original issue yes it's it can't, it can't be like so if you get it changed because it had no power issue and then you get it and then the screens like blanks out they're not related so technically apple doesn't have to cover that Correct. Um, i'll be honest there are ways around that but i will tell but that's not for me to say <laughs> um, which i took but i just said it so uh, one thing that's interesting about the portables, um, batteries have a one-year warranty on them. So a lot of people don't know that. People think it falls under the 90-day warranty. It doesn't. Well, it's uh, just for so, the max. Uh, right. So, But a lot of people don't know that. Right, right, right. So, so yeah, one year. So that's not bad. Uh, <laughs> if you have not claimed your product and paid all charges due within 60 days oh, after being notified by Apple that your product has been serviced, Apple will consider your product abandoned and may dispose of your product in accordance with applicable law. Okay. The best <laughs> example of this is people who are in jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is the best example. As weird as that sound, people go to jail and they don't they have no way to get to the store Definitely. but then they don't tell anybody about their Mac like being stuck in the store 
So, and I'll be honest, we're lenient on that 60 days because we go, we give them a lot more time. Oh, than we're that. very lenient. Yeah. I mean, so I'm only laughing at this one because I saw this policy from two, my two positions at Apple, uh, from a genius admin perspective and a uh, operations um, specialist um, because we dealt with it together. Um, and this, I've had, I have many stories about this whole leniency of the 60 day return policy and how we notify them and stuff like that um so that's for another time but yeah this is very important um especially for your products that are very expensive like your macbooks um or your iphones like they're they're not cheap and for you to just leave them there and not have them be claimed after 60 days just be sent in to be torn apart and reused it's a shame and unfortunately, like I said, if they're expensive products, so sometimes it's where the customers actually are trying to save up the money to pay for the repair. If you don't tell Apple, be like, hey, can you hold it for X amount of days? I need the funds to pay for it. We were, we were pretty accommodating to it, but you just we have are, to let yeah. us know. As long as you contact the store, yeah. they're not going to get rid of it. What I would tell people, the best way to pay this off, Apple does have a credit card in store for the Barclay card that you get like a certain amount of month to pay off. This would technically count as a payment, right? I mean, I would see that that this to not um, be a payment. I think so. I I would think it would. I think it's anything from Apple as long as the first purchase is a certain amount of money. So if you have a liquid damage 15 inch MacBook Pro, that costs you 1,200 bucks, guys. It, it's it's expensive, yeah. very expensive to fix. So I could completely get why you know you want to do that. So the last thing. If service involved... I'm reading what? this. I'm reading it. Oh, sorry. Uh, Come on, Will. You're stepping uh, on my, uh, my game. Uh, oh, Tim. Anyway, sorry, Tim. if ahead. service involves transferring information or installing software, you represent that you have the legal right to copy the information and agree to the terms of the software license, and you authorize Apple to transfer the information and accept such terms on your behalf in performing the service. Okay, yeah, so this is a... Uh, I, I just had to read it again. <laughs> awkward, awkward pause. Uh, Will, just remind me, is this a data transfer? Is this what they're talking about? No, this is this is involving... See, I'm glad you read the sentence that you have nothing to do with. And part of your job. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know what this means. Installing software uh, represents that what we're doing is that we're basically installing an operating system or we're erasing it. Uh, you know, and then when it talks about you authorize Apple to transfer the information, you know, basically would count under the one of the terms and conditions regarding the data transfers. Uh, so, oh, okay, okay. Really, this one's kind of like not that big of a deal. I don't think we ran into this too much, but really, it it's just comes down to last. data. Tr- yeah, it comes down to data transfers, and it comes down to leaving the product in the store and allowing us to install an operating system. So that's your terms and conditions, guys. So, I mean, you can go online on apple.com. They put it up there for everyone to look at. Uh, they have they have all the legal stuff up there if you really want to read through it. But the reality is when you go to the Genius Bar and you scroll down that long page, you are agreeing to all these things, and you will not be able to get a lawyer to stop you from getting anywhere with that. So, so funny, funny enough, I actually had a customer come to the store, and she picked up her new iPhone from the Genius bar she had to set up a new apple id for the phone and she works in washington dc for like a legal team where she has to she fights for these people that like read don't read these documents and they end up signing and agreeing to things that they don't agree to and stuff like that whatever and she ends up read has to reading a lot of them so she actually sat in a store and read the terms and conditions for signing up for an apple id and Mm. she was there for almost like an hour and a half reading them but she read it all (laughs) That's great. Yeah, I, n- I never, I never experienced that. I would never think to read it myself. People do read it. People do read it sometimes. Uh, it's very rare, but people do read it. Yeah. But again, the bottom line is that you're not getting a repair unless you accept it. So that's the bottom line.